So today we're going to go through a book by Sig Sigler. I think that it is quite the first, or at least I haven't gone through that many books by Sig Sigler, but he definitely is the godfather of motivation, the godfather of things, you know, of confidence and all of these amazing things. And therefore it's, um, yeah, I'm willing to go through it because I don't, I don't know why people aren't confident in themselves and also why I'm not confident in myself from, from time to time or just quite often, you know, but this is why I'm willing to go through that, you know, so that I can get something out of it and at the same time provide you with something that's worthwhile going through. So yeah, um, the book is called See You at the Top by Sig Sigler, obviously, and uh, it was printed quite a ton of times, but anyway, so six, so six, six steps. So six Sigler's six steps. The book is founded on the metaphor that success is a stairway and the elevator is out. To be successful and reach the top, you need to climb each stair in order. There are no shortcuts. According to Sig, the six steps are first, self-image. The second, your relationship with others. Then three goals, then attitude, work, and the last one is desire, which is the sixth one. Once the metaphor is established, Sig walks the reader through each of the step and what's going to take the, and what it's going to take to get up the step. He spends considerably more time on steps one to three, like 70% of the book, than he does on the final two steps. I guess that makes some sort of sense in that if you have a good positive self-image and good relationship with others and have taken the time to set out goals and cultivate a winning attitude, hard work and desire to keep going are likely to follow. So let's get a brief summary of the six steps outlined in See You at the Top. This, by the way, is an article by the bestbookbits.com site. I have noticed that it's not their articles, so they kind of copied from somewhere else. So it is kind of a large library of different summaries by different websites. So I can also just give you any opinion on what the quality is like, because it's always going to be different since it's not their work quite. At least I guess I you know do have... Do have a feeling that it is the case. Anyway, the first one is self-image. Sig condensed that lots of people have had have a bad self-image because society in general feeds garbage. He cites stuff like the popular music at the time. Late in the book, his citations reach so far as to put the blame for Charles Manson on the Beatles music. Wow. Sig provides us with 16 steps to a positive self-image, which cover stuff like positive self-talk to reading about the success of others and associating with other successful people. I've read and heard all of these suggestions before, but it's always great to hear them again in a new voice. One extra one may stick. I would actually also like to have them, but, <laughs> but no. The second one, your relationship with others. Is he going through them? No, it's actually a very short article. So yeah. Um, the second one, your relationship with others. The second step in a stairway to the top or success is your relationship with others. One of my favorite parts here is that Sig talks, takes his time to talk about how a healthy marriage is a key to success. Now, you don't have to get married, you know, but if you're in one already, get down and invest. Now, uh, some of the relationship views are a bit old fashioned. According to Sig, my wife should stop 20 minutes before I come home and shower, then put on her makeup and pre dress and be ready and waiting to rush it, rush into my arms when I get home from work. Well, that, that's, you know, quite outdated. I gotta have to admit that. Oh, and don't forget that dinner should be ready to be on the table as soon as I walk in the door. He doesn't mention kids, but I guess that my wife should have them lined up and waiting to greet me in a similar fashion. Yes, both half of the halves of a relationship should put in the work to make sure that they look nicer for the other half. Really, you both need to work hard on your marriage to make sure it's healthy. And I would say not only marriage, but also if you're in a relationship, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever uh, you're into, then both have to do something. You know, of course, for for quite some time, uh, the relationship could be sustained by one working more than the other person. But in the real end, it's it's just gonna fall apart. In the end, it's just gonna fall apart. Both have to do something, and both have to, both have to invest. And it is something that I, I don't know about. It is, 
I think at least, which is, I think, the, the biggest criticism that I'm having for myself in, in my relationship, my first and only that I had, that, you know, to the end, I, I wasn't investing quite a lot into it. Um, I don't know. Like, I think that I, I definitely could have done more and I definitely could have done things in a different way, meaning uh, being a bit more more present when you're with your loved one and you know some other things maybe i'm actually going to talk about that in a, in a separate video because you know maybe it can help somebody i don't know uh, way too many people get married then just stop courting each other as kid what courting sorry each other as kids come along maybe even before kids come along if you want a healthy marriage you need to put in the work and not healthy marriage will affect your overall motivation and that is going to affect your business and also your success and on the other hand um, as a you know, as I said again, um, not only marriage, but if you're having a great girlfriend, a great boyfriend that is really supporting you, that's really just, you know, that that's really, uh, you know, having your back and, and that's that's really trying to help you. It is insane what that can do to you and your motivation and your your will to thrive and your will to do shit. You know, because you know that there's always somebody you can talk to. There is always somebody. You can hit up and be like, wow, you know, could you please help me? Of course, and then it helps to, to really have a, a competent and intelligent girlfriend, a boyfriend that that really is also into the things that you are. Um, of course, this is beneficial. But on the other hand, if this person is just supportive and is trying to help you, then it is amazing. I mean, especially the, the mental support that you can gain from that. It is insane. It really is. The third is goals. The third step on the stairway to the top is your goals. Sig lays out how important it is to actually point yourself in the proper direction so that you just don't end up somewhere. Can you imagine Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to climb Mount Everest, explaining how he was able to accomplish that feat? Or fear, maybe, I don't know. Suppose he had explained that he was just out walking around one day when he happened to find himself at the top of the tallest mountain in the world. See you at the top. Yeah, it's probably... You know, it, it wasn't probably the case. Anyway, he doesn't just tell us that we should write them down. He also gives us some great principles for goal reaching. Inserted through his principles are a bunch of personal stories. Again, sometimes dated examples and lightly uh, cited research to help drive his points home. So principles of goal reaching. There's 11 principles. The first one, keep records of where you are. The second, commit to paper the goals you want to achieve on a yearly, monthly, and also daily basis. Be specific with your goals. Set a big, hard, but reachable goal to create excitement and a challenge. Make the goal, uh, make the goal long range, a year, to help the daily frustrations blend in. The sixth point is, list obstacles between you and the goal. Then break the goal down into daily increments. Mentally prepare to discipline yourself to take the steps needed to get to the goal. And the ninth, be convinced you can reach the goal, which I think is the, well, is the most difficult one and probably also the most important one. And the tenth is visualize yourself as reaching the goal before you start it. And then the attitude. Attitude and self-image from the first step at first glance seem pretty much the same thing, but they are not. Self-image is focused on your own view of yourself. Attitude is focused on how you approach the rest of the world. Are you generally a positive person or a negative person? Are setbacks temporary or is the man always getting you down? Quote unquote, by the way. See you at the top gives you a number of ways to approach life, work, that will help you move or have a positive attitude towards things that happen in your life. When I think of your attitude, I think of this longtime Chuck Swindle quote. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Chuck Swindle. So change how you react to life and you're going to find that so many of the problems you have are entirely your own fault. And it is basically what I've been talking about the past few days. It is insane how much we can change by just changing the way we think about things. It is insane. It's utterly insane. You know, and I think it is amazing because we are so powerful. And which is also one of the reasons why I think that that attitude in general, uh, also confidence and, you know, these maybe alpha traits, you know, these typical alpha traits, alpha, if, if you just think about an alpha personality, 
that this is so amazingly important. Yeah, okay, we all have doubts, you know. We all can sometimes be negative. But overall, we shouldn't. You know? I mean, overall, it's it's just really your brain, your thoughts, your mind that is doing shit. And it is insane. It really is. So if you think you can, you also can. And it is also one of the reasons why I am willing to start today to listen to some things that should get me into the right place. You know, and, and listening to them as long as I as I need to, so that it gets, you know, so that I have these things, these thoughts, these these attitudes, these this personality in my subconscious. You know, because of course, consciously thinking about it is easy, but once things get difficult and hard and whatnot, um, yeah, then you should also be having them in your mind and be able to work on them and work them out. The fifth one is work. So here's where the chapter starts getting short. Referencing work, Sigler can be summarized by telling you that there is no free lunch, so stop expecting success to just fall into your lap. Sigler gets into good communist handout tirade and even talks about welfare, overlooking that tirade, it's a good point. Way too many freelancers talk about how they have a hard time finding clients. Then when you ask them what uh, are the steps they take to find clients, it amounts to sitting and waiting for clients to find them. If you want to succeed, get out there and generate some motion in your business. It's highly unlikely that enough work will just walk in your door and for every story you hear about work just quote-unquote happening to someone, you've got the other 99% of people who had, and 0.9 by the way, of people who had a business fail or barely scrape by and they had to close it. You know, some are lucky, some are not. It is what it is. Life is not fair. The sixth one is desire. The final section on desire is the shortest, removing the whole chapter about communism and focuses on walking us through how desire, really wanting something so bad and doing anything for it, can trump natural talent. If you just have talent, it is way too easy to sit back on that talent and not really work hard for things. Maybe you have the natural genetics for running and you're fast in grade school and high school, but you don't really train because you can beat everyone. Then you step up to national level and college competitions and find out that there are lots of people faster than you. They may not have the favorable genetics you do, but they get up at 5 a.m. daily and do the training needed to be fast. That getting up at 5 a.m. daily to train is what makes them fast. That desire to excel. So here is where many freelancers fail. They want to talk about working for themselves, but they don't want to do the hard work to actually become a solid business owner. They may even be one of the best designers or programmers out there, but they don't continually work or practice their craft and they get surpassed by that person that just has a burning passion and spends as much time as possible learning more. Instead of reading about running a good business or taking seminars about it, you just dream of running a good business. You don't put in the work. Just because you have desire doesn't mean that you are going to hit it big, but being that day after day and continually learning or improving certainly greatly increases your chances and this is definitely the fucking case so fucking do something don't sit around doing nothing do something do something with your life we all know that we could just really be doing something amazing with our lives we all can you know and god fuck this shit it is insane you know we, we all can do something and also trying to do something Something that pisses me off. Every single fucking day, I spend God knows how many hours working on a podcast, working uh, working on my fucking design stuff. But I kind of have a slight feeling that, you know, I, I am not as confident in these things as I should be. I really am not. Maybe I'm not just as passionate about these things as I was when I started out. Could also be the case. And it might actually be the case because I've, I've turned... You know, down things, I've I've kind of, you know, I lowered the amount of work that I just put into some things. I, I mean, numbers are going up. But maybe I'm just, maybe it's just the patience. You know, it could also just be the patience. I see things going up. I see things doing way better than when I started out. And also some time in, like things were, were just going to no place. I think it is a mental game once again. I think it's, it's a mental thing once again. I mean, you can do a lot of work 
you can put so much work into something every single fucking day, but if you don't see the value in it, it has no value, even though it, it maybe has. And I mean, I go through articles every single day. I, I learn things every single fucking day. You know, I think about other people's problems when I go through Reddit and whatnot. I mean, I, I can find something positive in whatever the fuck I'm doing every single day. And also just practice, practicing fucking English. It's not my mother tongue. But I've been able to get pretty good at it. And I think that I'm gonna get even better the longer and the more often I do it. Of course, I, you can hear the difference. Of course, you can hear that, I, that it is not my mother tongue. This is definitely something that I... Uh, that I wanna, uh, that I wanna miss, you know. But yeah, also in terms of my body, I'm working on every single fucking day, you know. As you can see, it's a lot of things that I'm going through are just also to, you know, so that so that I can learn something, you know. It's yeah, it's just what it is. I I just have to admit it. And I have to say it because yeah, it's also not that of a big problem. Like do something we can learn something and, and create something for other people because this is what i'm tremendously hoping to do for other people i don't know yet whom i'm serving and it's one of the biggest problems that i'm having and some of the things that i should have been working on but but yeah i don't know i'm hopefully gonna see you the next time please take care stay healthy stay passionate and desire more than you have I'm gonna see you the next time bye bye